Okay, here's warm up 10.2. If you flip a coin and toss a number cube, that's a dice, right? We just want to make sure it's a six sided dice, um, or die. How many possible outcomes are there? So I'm going to use the fu fundamental counting principle here. So um, we've got our coin, and then we've got our cube. And I'm thinking, well, how many things could happen with flipping a coin? Two things can happen, right? Heads or tails. And then we're, when we're rolling the cube, six things can happen. And um, with the fundamental counting principle, you can just multiply the number of options in each category or the number of possible outcomes in each category. And that means there's going to be 12 possible outcomes. Okay? All right. Because you could get a heads and then six different things, or, or you could get a, a, a tails and then six, six different things, which would be a total of 12. Okay. All right. If you flip a coin and toss two number cubes, how many possible outcomes are there? So I'm going to um, use the same strategy here. So I've got two things that can happen with a coin, six things that can happen on the first cube, and then six things that can happen on the second cube. And then I multiply that up, and it's going to be 12 times times 6 which is 72 okay next up when um, when two number cubes are rolled how many possible outcomes are there so this is uh, I'm just really getting ready for number four here um, it's gonna be 36 because we got the two cubes six things can happen on each multiply them together for a total of 36 all right, so that brings us to this next one. If two number cubes are rolled, let's find the probability that the sum is 5. Okay, so remember for, for probability, um, I'm going to put P for probability, but probability we're going to do favorable over total outcomes. So I'm going to put that for favorable. Okay, now the total outcomes when we're rolling two number cubes is 36. So all of these problems, I think we're rolling two number cubes, so we're going to have something out of 36 on each of those. So now I've got to figure out how many um, possible ways we could get um, a sum of 5. So I'm going to make a little chart to figure that out. Let's say there's cube number 1 and cube number 2. Well, rolling uh, the sum being 5, so 1 and 4, the sum would be 5, right? Or a 2 and a 3, the sum would be 5. But actually, if you flip those around, they're different outcomes. Because on, on cube 1, if you roll a 4, that's different than rolling a 1, right? So I could roll a 4 and a 1, or a 3 and a 2. And flipping those are actually different outcomes. So, you know, if you think of it as a red number cube and a blue one, it's different if the red comes up 1 or the, uh, the blue one comes up 1, all right? So I've got four favorable outcomes, and that means one ninth probability if you reduce it, all right? probability that the sum is not 5. So um, you could use the same kind of strategy and make a table of all the favorable outcomes. So it's going to be something out of 36. But what I'm going to do instead, I just figured out the ones where the sum is 5. So all the other ones are going to be ones where the sum is not 5. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is take all 36 possible ro rolls and just subtract out the ones that I know are 5, right? So it's quicker to, um, to, to do it that way. So then I've got 32 out of the 36. Um, let's see, 4 goes into both of those, so that would be 8 ninths if I reduce that. Makes sense. 1 ninth of the time, the sum's going to be 5. The other 8 ninths, the sum's not going to be 5. Okay. All right. Probability of the sum is less than or equal to 5. Okay, so it's favorable over total again. I'm not going to write that out, but there's 36 things that can happen. Okay, so let's think about the sum um, being less than or equal to 5. So I might just make a little chart here. Here's my two number cubes. Less than or equal to 5. Well, double ones. So I'm thinking about all the ways I can roll a 1 on the first and have be, be less than or equal to 5. All of those would work. If I did 1 and 5, then the sum is 6, and that's too much. So let's see, with a 2, we could go 2, 1, 2, 2, 
two, three. With a three, we can go three, one, or three, two. And with a four, you can just do four, one. So those are the favorable outcomes for the sum being less than or, sorry, I was off screen there a little bit. All of the, the possible outcomes for the sum being less than or equal to five. So let's just count them up now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten out of the thirty-six. So that would reduce to five eighteenths because they're both even numbers, so we can divide by two. Okay. And then the, the probability of the sum being less than five. So it's still a number out of 36. I'm going to use the same chart that I had uh, over here um, so I don't have to rewrite it. So I just don't want the ones that are going to be equal to 5. So I want only the ones that are less than 5. So I'm looking for ones that add up to 5 here. Uh, oh, two, three. Those are the ones that add up to 5. So all the rest of them are less than 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 out of the 36 which is one-sixth probability. Okay, that's the end of the warm-up, and I'll see you next time.